Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, <clears throat> the title of the presentation is uh, Fatigue Assessment of the Collapsed 20th Century Cable State for Severa Bridge in, uh, in Genoa. The outline of the presentation will be a simple a, a quick introduction to the case study. And then I will show you some details of the simplified structural model we adopted trying to focus on the most relevant uh, aspect of the, of the case. And then I will show you like uh, how um, we, did, uh, we did evaluate the fatigue load spectrum and uh, we accounted for damage accumulation. And in the conclusion, in the conclusions, it will be possible to, let's say, to conclude that uh, <coughs> fatigue could be a triggering mechanism for the, for the collapse of the bridge. This is a picture of the bridge before the collapse. The structure um, dated uh, 1973 uh, and was constructed uh, uh, by the 77 of the last centuries, conceived by uh, engineer uh, Morandi, who was uh, an icon uh, for, uh, um, for Italy and for the technology of the time. And uh, the whole uh, viaduct is quite complex, and uh, uh, we will uh, concentrate on one of the three uh, main uh, uh, structural systems. According to Morandi's view, he call it a self-standing structural system. I will show you some details, not too many. And who collapsed the, the 14th of August last year um, with uh, 43 uh, fatalities and uh, um, in, impressing uh, losses, uh, economical losses. Uh, just uh, take a look at the. This was. Uh, number 9 who colla that collapsed, this is number 10 of this system, and this is number 11, which uh, in the 19th was already being subjected to uh, retrofitting of the cable state. Uh, basically, the system uh, is composed uh, by uh, the main deck in green, who is uh, supported at four points, here, 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 and here, Two points are, uh, two supports are provided by inclined piers, and the other two supports are provided by the stay cables that are hanging uh, on top to the antenna. The antenna is an independent system from uh, the, the rest of the structure, and uh, this uh, uh, system also provides support to the uh, nearby uh, Gerber beams. Note that uh, the collapse was uh, quite uh, fragile in the sense that the whole system, self-standing system, together with the two Gerber beam, collapsed. But on the other way around, the uh, behavior of the whole viaduct was not that uh, tight, was quite robust in the sense that uh, the presence of Gerber beams uh, avoided the collapse to propagate to all the rest of the structure. <coughs> Um, this is a, a view of the, of the self-standing system uh, where we focused our analysis. There is a, a very um, complete and uh, detailed publication by Calvi who did a very complex uh, numerical simulation on this, uh, on this case. But I will show you we adopted much simpler analytical or similar analytical models. Uh, this is the cross section of the main deck. You see, it's a, a multi cell box guild. And uh, uh, we, in, in, at the first stage, we focused on only on the deck. Okay? The, uh, another point that we will focus on will be uh, the cable stay, because uh, our conjecture is that. Uh, the failure mechanism started from uh, one of the cable stay. Uh, due to the conception of the system, the collapse was also uh, recognized by Calvi that uh, 
the scenario with the collapse of one of the cable stay is coherent with the mechanism of the collapse of the whole self-standing system. The uh, main issue and the main problem is that uh, uh, it is not clear how this, stand, uh, this cable stay should have, uh, um, let's say, collapsed. Because according, for example, to uh, the Calvi's uh, analysis, uh, the, level of, the level of corrosion in the cable stay uh, necessary to the collapse should have been up to the 60% of the cross-section. Instead, the level that was, uh, let's say, uh, recognized after the failure was much less, only 20 to 30%. Okay, this is uh, a scheme of the stay, okay? Uh, we subdivided the cable stay in three main parts. The inner cable that were uh, put in place at the beginning of the construction phase, then the outer concrete that was made in section during the construction phase, and after this section was connected together, there was added some additional uh, strands to uh, pre-compress, pre-stress the concrete layer, providing, according to the idea of uh, Morandi, uh, an efficient uh, um, protection against corrosion uh, of the system. This is uh, the, stru uh, the simplified structural model, and uh, um, based on the fact that uh, the uh, cable that are in this position was uh, uh, stressed in a way to uh, vanish the deflection of uh, point A, it is possible quite easily to uh, calculate the stress in the cable. The model is very simple, but, and, but the, the provided stress that is shown here is uh, quite coherent with the result of much uh, more complicated calculation. This is uh, just an example of the distribution of, moment, of moments and uh, shear stresses, and uh, as, shows, uh, as shown by uh, Calvi, the, uh, those levels of, uh, the, let's say, of, of the forces are uh, really, uh, so should not have uh, produced any collapse even in the deck. Okay? There was uh, a very high safety margin with respect to this, uh, to the static uh, collapse. Okay. Uh, looking some a bit more in detail to the construction phase of the bridge, uh, as I was saying, first the 30, um, 352 strands were connected. They, since the uh, the cable were put in place after the construction of the bridge. Uh, in the first phase, there was, uh, in this position, some provisional uh, cables and that were uh, gradually removed uh, as long as the main cable were put in place and pre-stressed. Uh, after this phase, the concrete covering was uh, casted and the casting happened in, uh, in segments because uh, the weight of the concrete modified the curvature of the of the strand of the, the cable stay, and this and this is not compatible with the tensile stress uh, tensile strain of the concrete. So they prepare a number of cast uh, of uh, segments, and uh, after concrete curing, the segment joints were filled, and the con concrete section were pre-stressed with the additional 112 uh, strands to the final stress of 900 megapascal. This is the stress calculated by, I'm assumed by Morandi as a, um, let's say, after stress losses due to relaxation. And this is the value of the stress uh, assumed in the, um, in the main cable. Consider that uh, the, this pre-stressing does not affect this value because uh, the, uh, the system is injected only at the end of the, uh, of the pre-stressing procedure and uh, at the end uh, all the system is connected with the transverse girder and uh, uh, according to the designer uh, 
idea uh, uh, perfectly homogenized section is realized. As emphasized by, also by Calvi, uh, if we take a look at to the static loads, there is, uh, there is no way to explain uh, the, the failure of mechanism because uh, the, the loads adopted by Morandi for the design of the bridge were already, the static load were already quite comparable even to the uh, new standards uh, in the Euro, in Euro boards, okay? This was because uh, um, at that time uh, there was still to be considered military uh, lorries and loads. On the other hand, what could be, uh, in our opinion, the cause uh, of the collapse uh, could be, uh, um, let's say, find uh, considering the, uh, the uh, variable loads. The system that I, that I described up to now was uh, the system working only against the dead loads and the permanent loads. But we can consider also uh, to uh, assess the fatigue load spectrum. We, uh, in order to, 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 to do this, we made a, a number of uh, simplification that are reasonable, concentrated loaded in place of distributed loaded for the lorry, no interaction among the lorries, and, but if you make calculation with the frequency and the number of lorries, this is also uh, quite reasonable. We assume that the lorries were uh, traveling only in the slow lane, and that this is a, a conservative uh, hypothesis. And uh, we made a simplification, imagine that uh, the weight of each lorry is tran transmitted only to the adjacent, adjacent uh, state cable. The uh, statistic uh, we used was uh, partly from uh, a report uh, by Autostrade, and uh, we made this uh, further uh, assumption. Um, we assumed that the increase of traffic from construction uh, time up to now was more or less linear. And uh, in order to make an assumption uh, of uh, which could be the amount of uh, each, uh, the weight of each lorry, we referred to the euro codes. Uh, those statistics were uh, obtained uh, from uh, several study with the uh, weight load sh weight weighting loading uh, models, and uh, uh, we um, let's say obtain a distribution from this uh, that is uh, the fatigue load model number four and the total number of the lorries that was uh, that were provided by uh, Autostrade. This is the influence line of the, of the deck, and uh, if one only lorry is passing uh, time by time, it, you see that the amplitude of the load is more or less 1.3 the weight of the lorry. <coughs> and here it comes the main our assumption to, uh, to give, uh, uh, let's say, an hypothesis for the, uh, the collapse, is that somewhere in the cable stay, uh, one section of the, of the stay was uh, due to the, uh, let's say, to the aggressive environmental uh, condition and corrosion was basically decompressed. If the section is decompressed, then variable loads are actually, uh, let's say, sustained only by, by steel, by the strands. And in this way, we can uh, calculate uh, the number of cycles for each type of the vehicle, uh, vehicle uh, uh, assessed as before, and the corresponding, let's say, amplitude of the, of the load. This uh, load spectrum can be uh, combined with uh, um, pal uh, palming uh, minor rule, sorry, and uh, uh, 
this is a, a very simple way to account for, let's say, fatigue in case of uh, uh, multiple load amplitude scenario. This is uh, what I was saying before, uh, the, the actual uh, estimation of the uh, corrosion picture in the, in the strands that is uh, something about 20% uh, and uh, this is the results of the fatigue assessment. The, the blue line is uh, the uh, Eurocode curve with uh, a plateau at uh, uh, 10 to the uh, 6 uh, cycles and uh, if, you consider, oops, if you consider two different, uh, uh, let's say, corrosion scenario, that is the red one, no corrosion, <coughs> in place of the green one with the corrosion, you see that in the case of uh, uh, Holler's curve, uh, as uh, provided uh, for, uh, let's say, not, uh, no corrosion in the steel, you don't have any chance to uh, imagine collapse for this load spectrum. On the other way around, you can also consider uh, how the uh, volume curve is modified in presence of aggressive uh, environment. This is, has been studied especially in, uh, in, in the field of uh, design of marine structures. Consider that close to the uh, Morandis Bridge, uh, there was also the Ilva uh, farm, uh, the Ilva uh, factory with pollution and uh, other more or less known uh, cause of uh, aggressive uh, environment. What happened is if we consider no corrosion, again, the, uh, palm, the minor rules provide uh, no way to reach one, but increasing <coughs> the corrosion, the phenomenon is that the points translate downwards because the uh, section is diminished and then the stress uh, amplitude is uh, augmented and then uh, close to 20% corrosion you get the uh, damage accumulation equal to 1. So in our, uh, uh, according to our anal analysis, uh, a, a deadly combination of uh, very high cycle fatigue and the corrosion could have been the cause of the collapse of one of the uh, state cable. And this is basically the, the conclusion. Of course, our intention is not to say the definite words, of course, because uh, we don't have, we didn't use all the available data because uh, uh, investigation are still uh, um, carrying uh, on. But our uh, main concern is uh, trying to, uh, to warn the academic and uh, technical uh, community about the possible risk of this phenomenon in existing bridge, uh, especially the one constructed in the last, uh, in the last century. Thank you very much for the attention.